I'm Jean Strauss. I'm the director of the Dorothy and Lewis D. Coleman Center for Scholars and Writers at the New York Public Library. One of the, we give fellowships to 15 people a year to come work at the library and use its research collections. And one of the fellows the first year I came, I arrived 2003, was Melanie Rahack, who was working on a book about Nancy Drew. Right, and after I wrote that book, I wrote another book, which just came out and actually contains the real knowledge that I got at the Coleman Center, which was a recipe for Brussels sprouts passed on to me by Jean, which she adapted from the New York Times and then I adapted from her, um, and which you can find here. So what I've done already this morning is cook bacon, and what you want to do is render the fat, that you want to get really crispy, and as you take each piece out, you want to make sure you drip as much fat back into the pan as you can, because that's what you're going to cook the Brussels sprouts in. Um, the adaptation I made, actually, is that there's not enough fat in the recipe for the Brussels sprouts, which are very absorbent. So you can either double the bacon recipe, um, which would be two pounds of bacon, or you can add butter later on. So we're going to add butter today. And I'm going to just jump in here and say that it's my favorite recipe alteration yeah. ever because Jean wrote on the copy that she gave me when I was at the center, here, I usually add a stick of butter, which is, I think you want to read that in every recipe. So. Yes. Brussels sprouts are really like little baby cabbages, and you just want to get off the really inedible tough part and um, save the tender green part. And the prep is the hard, what takes a long time for this recipe, because you have to do this and then shred them. But I would say the whole thing takes about 45 minutes. Melanie chops them by hand, which is a really, labor-intensive thing to do, and so hers takes longer. It probably does take longer, but it's also a little more satisfying, you know, when you really need to get your Thanksgiving family visiting stress tension out to just like chop, 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 chop all these tiny little heads. It's very, very satisfying. Um, I have this ancient Cuisinart, and I can't really, the new, new ones that have all those attachments and tubes within tubes and stuff, I can't ever figure out. Okay, I'm starting to see the wisdom in Jean's method. That took about three seconds. <laughs> now, see, this is where I would put the, this, the pine, pine nuts in. We yeah. can do that. Let's do that. And you can toast them at the end to get them brown, or... This is my time-saving method to make up for the hand chopping. But I found if you put them in the bacon fat like this first, they get toasted up and brown sort of as you go. I, it probably says on the recipe how much, and I don't remember, but does that look like enough to you? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and that's the great thing with this recipe, right? You were yeah. saying this earlier. Is you that, improvise. You know, there are these measurements, but actually you can do however many Brussels sprouts you want. You obviously can never have too much bacon in anything. Um, or butter. Or butter or fat. This is a great way <laughs> to serve Brussels sprouts but mask them entirely. I tend to not tell people what, is, what this is and just serve it. And then they ask for more and ask what it is. And, um, and I say Brussels sprouts and they say, oh, I hate Brussels sprouts. Right. I've never done that. Try but, it. Yeah. The genealogy of recipes is um, pretty casual and nice. I mean, this, yeah, I think you know, so. I adapted I mean, this from the Times, you adapted it from me. Whenever you make this recipe, people want you to come back and do it again. Yes, exactly. So. And I always think recipes that are passed around among friends are among the best. Oh, Melanie, would you get the butter out? <laughs> it's, it's in the door <laughs> of the refrigerator. We need it already. It just takes up the fat really fast. They cook down, so it'll hold a lot, the pan, but, um... So, this is, in fact, an entire stick of butter. <laughs> Let's put it down at the bottom. There we go. Yeah, that's better. Otherwise, they'll burn for the, at the bottom of the pan. I feel like I'm going to go into a Julia Child parody. <laughs> Now we throw the entire pan on the floor. Yeah, exactly. She probably would have added six sticks of butter then. Well, we still might. <laughs> this is a lot of sprouts. I don't think you can really over oh, I don't cook think so. it, do I you think? think? So I mean, no. unless you left the pan on and it dried out. But Oh, the bacon. We didn't put the bacon We're going to put the bacon in at the end. <laughs> the bacon! I'm not, I'm not forgetting. Uh, I was going to say, it depends on your proportions of sprouts and nuts and, you know, how much you have to. Um, As I believe you wrote on my recipe, shovel it around. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> you want to try it? the taster? Sure. It's hot. Careful. Mmm. Really good. Cooked enough? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because by the time you put the bacon in, it'll go a little more. Oh, it's really good. 
Mm. <laughs> so if you get the bacon really crispy, this is very easy. And you get very greasy fingers. Sorry? Go I ahead. was just gonna say, do you think that's enough bacon? No. No. I, we have to do all the <laughs> Why all did the I bacon. ask that question? <laughs> all the bacon. Um, for Thanksgiving, you can put it in a souffle dish or a casserole dish and actually put the bacon on top at the end and serve it that way and reheat it in the oven if you do it ahead of time. So it's pretty indestructible about doing ahead or at the last minute. And hopefully you have leftovers, which is the best part. 